I do not mind it when people criticize the SDA church. It keeps me on my toes. It keeps me alert to what is wrong with my church and, as you may have recognized or will come to recognize, I do not bury my head in the sand regarding the ills of the church. In fact, I lament the apostatizing nature of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, which is of grave concern to me. I therefore appreciate honest criticism of the church, but I wonder if some critics know that their criticism is more credible if they elect to be honest. If you choose to be dishonest, it sends off alarm bells. What, for example, should I make of this? The name of the poem is Where's the Lord? Attended an SDA church, heard nothing about the Lord. What? Say what? Attended an SDA church, heard nothing about the Lord. This lady claims to have been an Adventist from birth for all her life until recent years. And in all of those years, she said she heard nothing about the Lord. Someone needs to investigate to which SDA church she belonged because those people need help and they need it urgently. In a Christian church and never heard about the Lord? All I heard was Ellen G. White, the history of how she scored. No, seriously. Is she serious? Should she be taken seriously? What is this? So, having heard of Ellen G. White for all those years, has she never heard of Ellen White's book, Steps to Christ? How about Christ's object lessons? It has been said that the book, The Desire of Ages, is the very best book out there on the life and teachings of Christ. Has Mrs. Slattery heard of those books? Has she ever read one? What explains her being in the Adventist church and never hearing about the Lord? I'll give you a clue. Try this word. Dishonesty. All I heard was Ellen G. White, the history of how she scored. Could feel her presence around me. Seemed I was wrapped in a shroud. She felt Ellen White's presence around her. Wow. I must really never have been an Adventist. I have no idea what it means to feel the presence of Mrs. White around me. Does Mrs. Slattery believe in ghosts? I wonder if my brethren know what it is to feel Ellen White's presence around them. I must ask. This is amazing. She must have really been wrapped in a shroud, as she said. Couldn't escape this haunting fear. To Ellen White they all bowed. She's the spirit of prophecy, one whom the Lord has endowed. Praise, praise your name, O oh dear Ellen. We'll read your books, they all vowed. The life within me grew weaker, Christ blotted out by her face. Where have they buried my Jesus? Why can't he be in this place? No, assuming that this is a honest person, then that must have been her honest experience and what being a Seventh-day Adventist honestly meant to her all her life. So, if that was Adventism and she was a dedicated Adventist, then she would have been praising and bowing to Mrs. Ellen G. White and not Jesus all her life. Hey, that is her testimony. No wonder then she was so shattered when she learned negative things about Mrs. White. She has revealed what her problem has been. She was looking to Mrs. White instead of looking to Jesus. Sorry, Sister Slattery, but the Adventist church to which I belong, the one I have known for only 30 years, a considerably shorter time than yours, makes no such recommendation. And clearly, you have not read Mrs. White extensively or you would have seen that she rejects such a response. Bring your evidences, clear and plain, from the word of God. And thus saith the Lord, is the strongest testimony you can possibly present to the people. Let none be educated to look to Sister White, but to the mighty God, who gives instruction to Sister White. 
Now, this is one instance when the honesty of the slatteries is called into question by me. Let's say we ignore that ridiculous bit of poetry. Yes, I did say ridiculous. It does invite ridicule one way or the other, either on the SDA church or on Mrs. Slattery herself. Allow me to share another bit of dishonesty. The seal of God. Oh, the Sabbath. Now, now, in Seventh-day Adventism, are you saying the seal of God is keeping the Sabbath day? That's correct. The Sabbath is the testing truth. The Sabbath is the testing truth. So that's, that's the proof that you have the seal of God. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's take a look at this chart and see what the Bible has to say about the seal of God. Looking in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 through 14, it says, In whom ye have also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of His glory. And, uh, you know, we're running out of time here, but check also, in cross-reference to this, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, which will tie in this, but it says, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Looks to me like there's a different seal of God going on here <laughs> than what we're finding in Seventh-day Adventism. Let's do that again. The seal of God. Oh, the Sabbath. The seal of God. Seal. Known. An embossed emblem, figure, symbol, word, letter, etc. Used as attestation or evidence of authenticity. Ye were sealed. Sealed. Verb. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 which will tie in this, but it says, ye were sealed, sealed, verb, to assure, confirm, or bind with, or as if with a seal. The SDA Church teaches that the fourth commandment, unlike the other nine of the Decalogue, and like the seal of heads of nations, contains God's name, his position as creator, and his domain heaven and earth. We believe there is an upcoming controversy where persons will have to choose between the Lord's day and another day. That may well be a ridiculous teaching, or it could be true, that we will examine in a future video. Until we have discussed that particular subject, let us for argument's sake at this point deem it a questionable teaching. Be that as it may, the Holy Spirit is not the seal, known, of God. The Holy Spirit is God. God will seal, verb, his children. Now, I am prepared to assume that Mr. Larry Wessels was not aware of that clarification when he was making a mockery of himself, confusing a verb with a noun. But am I to assume that Wallace Slattery a Seventh-day Adventist for over 40 years, and his wife, a Seventh-day Adventist all her life, were not aware? Was it honest of them to sit there, watch Mr. Wessels confusing the noun with the verb without correcting it? Or did they want the listening audience to be deliberately misled about what the SDA Church teaches? Surely, they know that the SDA Church does not teach that persons will be sealed by the Sabbath instead of by the Holy Spirit. That, again, is ridiculous. If you have to be dishonest to paint someone or an organization in a negative light, chances are your case is so weak that you have to try to strengthen it by whatever means. To do that, is to call your own integrity into question, which is not a wise thing to do. So, it has been established that the slatteries are not always friendly with the truth. It does not necessarily mean, however, that everything they said must be dismissed. It is, after all, possible that they were spot on with other comments. In the next video, 
we will examine another argument of theirs against the teachings of the SDA Church.